At first sight, the night sky is made up of thousands of stars arranged randomly. But when you look closer, some stars are more visible than others. They're brighter. These stars were recorded very early on in history. The Babylonians grouped them into 12 constellations. The constellations of the Zodiac. If you observe the sky long enough, the stars appear to move around an imaginary axis running through the North Pole. Did Paleolithic man observe this phenomenon, picking out groups of stars, and then mentally project the images of familiar animals onto underground walls? the cave might be far more than a gallery of 600-odd paintings. The very shape of this dome, the belt of the zodiac in the sky. One figure, a large bull, and the Aldebaran star. If the hall of the bulls were in glass, you would see the constellations behind them. Astrotheology is the study of astronomical influence on religion. This can be seen in many ancient holy symbols. Among its numerous other meanings, to the various cultures that have come and gone throughout the millennia, the swastika symbol is an occult emblem which can be interpreted, especially in certain secret societies, as symbolic for the solar year as well as Plato's Great Year, which is a roughly 26,000 year long cycle that also matches the cycle of the Mayan long count calendar. In this context, it is reflecting the cycle of what Isaac Newton called the procession of the equinoxes, which tracks the sun's path through the 12 houses of the zodiac. Now this phenomenon of procession, and I will speak more on this later, has been, in my humble opinion, incorrectly attributed to a wobble in the earth. Now there may or may not be a wobble, but this is not why this 25,900 year long cycle exists. Let us consider the very interesting words of Sri Yukatswar, who among other things was a very revered yogi and an astronomer who in 1894 wrote that the cause of the procession of the equinox was the result of our sun's orbit around another star. He estimated that this orbit period was about 24,000 years which is quite close and this unusual statement is supported by very recent announcements by NASA which incidentally has a reputation for delaying or withholding the release of information and they say that there's at least one massive body lurking at the edge of our solar system a possible failed star or brown dwarf or planet X it's still quite controversial so while the purpose of this presentation is not to propose that I have absolute certain proof of what's going on by the Oort cloud, I would like to point out that mainstream science and the media do seem to be catching up to what some of these scholars of the past have said and what I started publicizing in the late 90s with my original Planet X video. If NASA did discover, or should I say rediscover, a tenth planet in our solar system, then why would they have the need to cover it up? I mean, this would be the biggest discovery of the century, and yet, if it is covered up, there must be some reason, some reason to withhold this information from the public. One of my favorite stories takes place over 2,000 years ago when a wise priest in Egypt told a well-respected Greek statesman named Solon about a spectacular legend recorded in stone 
translated to Greek from ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs about powerful seafaring empires, a great war of the gods, and massive global cataclysms. The Egyptian priest said to Solon, and I quote, You remember only one deluge, though there have been many. You and your fellow citizens are descended from the very few survivors that remained. But you know nothing about it because so many succeeding generations left no record in writing. The change in the rising and setting of the sun and the other heavenly bodies, how in those times they used to set in the quarter where they now rise and used to rise where they now set. Of all the changes which take place in the heavens, this reversal is the greatest and most complete. There is at that time great destruction of animals in general and only a small part of the human race survives. That was written by Plato in 360 BC. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm a formerly educated anthropologist and now author and I'd like to invite you to explore some of these mysteries with me which up until recently have eluded any serious consideration in mainstream academia. Species with Amnesia, Our Forgotten History, and Gods with Amnesia, Subterranean Worlds of Inner Earth. Thank you for your continued support, and I look forward to meeting many of you at the coming events in Los Angeles.